Mmm. Notice anything different? Huh? Let me do that again. That's right. Got my painting gloves on, so I'm gonna paint. <laughs> well, actually, I already painted, so I'm I'm filming this introduction uh, after the fact. But uh, as you can see, the HO229 is behind me, and this is gonna be the second to last video. Uh, the next one will just show the the uh, completed build, and I really like how this is turning out. It's uh, it's a really cool looking plane, and uh, the kit went together really well. Uh, just a couple little issues, which I'll explain in this video. But this is going to mostly be uh, on uh, how, I, how I painted this um, uh, weird, odd World War II aircraft. So, without any further ado, let's get on with the video. Alright, I am ready for a primer. And so let's go through... Um, first, I, I, I think this is going to look really cool on the stand. I've got it at just the right angle. And... Uh, I think it will look really cool on display. The plane went together really well. Uh, the wings fit tight. I've got these posts in here. Let's see if we can zoom in. You've got the posts right here and right there and along the bottom. And uh, they fit really well. They fit in there real tight. And uh, once you put those in, it, it, you can almost leave it as like a dry fit. Uh, but I wasn't sure how these seams were, were going to be along the, the wing route. And uh, it's kind of hard to tell with this clear plastic how everything fits if you got any gaps. Um, so once I get primer on it, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to tell if I got any gaps. But uh, uh, they fit together real tight. Uh, it kind of looks like a hodgepodge mess just because of all the different colors and the black that you see uh, It's all on the inside of the The uh, the panels here, so this isn't painted uh, So it just kind of looks like a like a mess because you can see all the glue marks and stuff uh, and that's on the inside So once I get primer on it, I will be able to see if I have any mistakes uh, on this wing I did spray it with primer uh, just to see where if I had any any seams along here and uh, and I didn't so I went ahead and, and uh, took that off with some IPA uh, the only issue that I did have with fit is there is a tubular type frame that goes on the inside of the front of the canopy that matches the contour and I don't think I had that in there correctly uh, I, I kind of knew that whenever I put it in, it just, it didn't seem right, but I thought I could get away with it. Um, so when I glued the front part of the canopy on, <clears throat> I had to put pressure on, hold pressure on here until the glue set up. And there is a couple little gaps in here that I had to fill with clear glue along where the front part of the canopy meets the rear part of the canopy. And then I took some uh, Vallejo plastic putty and filled it in. And hopefully I got them uh, when I prime it. I should be able to tell. I've already painted this uh, window framing black. And then I just sprayed the metallic on there just to, uh, to see uh, what kind of gaps that I did have already. So, and that's when I, that's when I saw the gaps that had been left by the, by the uh, poor fit of the front of the canopy. So... I've taken care of those since then, and hopefully that will uh, be okay. As you can see, I've masked off some areas. I masked, I went ahead and painted the metallic for this area behind the jet exhaust, and I masked that up. Uh, I used paper, to, and which is something that I don't normally do, to mask off the interior parts. And the reason I did that is I didn't want to like fill that with, uh, like anything sticky like this stuff, uh, the blue tack, because there's some delicate parts in here. <coughs> and uh, the paper allows me to fit, to, to wedge basically in between the, the panels and the interior parts so I can get a good seal so I don't hopefully get any paint in underneath there. Um, I did use blue tack for the front of the intakes. I went ahead and painted uh, the inside of these first before I installed the engines 
because there's a demarcation line between the metallic of the uh, jet intakes and this outer shell, which I want to be blue. And so I went ahead and painted that that uh, the the blue color and uh, masked it off. Uh, let's see, everything fit well other than the, the front of the canopy. Um, the only thing that I did, other thing that I did have issues with was this, uh, these two panel doors that fit over this, there's a parachute pack inside here. And they, they were way too big. So instead of messing with those two pieces, I just cut a piece of plastic card to fit and then scribed a line. I don't know if we can see it because of the lighting. And then I scribed a line down the center. But other than that, everything fits great. Um, it's nice and sturdy. The wings are on, from all I can tell, the way they should be. It's kind of got a, like a little upswept. Very, it's, it's just an awesome plane. So, I am ready for primer. I'm going to black base this. And, uh, and then I, I'm going to do something a little bit different with my, with my camouflage. I'm going to do a splinter pattern. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to black base this. And I'm going to cut out masks for my splinter pattern with uh, some vinyl. I have this like vinyl masking stuff. And uh, I'm going to mask off all my, all my pattern. And then I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to do it that way. So it should be interesting. I've never done it this way, but uh, we'll see if it works. So I'm going to get to priming this and um, see you in a bit. All right, I've got it uh, primed and black. I got it black based. Got my marbling layer on, and I usually put my marbling layer on in white. That's just kind of what I do. So a lot of people use the same color that they're that they're going to paint the uh, paint the plane, but not me. I know a lot of tank modelers do it this way, and I kind of like it. Uh, there were a couple little spots that I found uh, along the leading edge of the wing that I had to take care of, but other than that, it looks pretty good. Uh, there are like some tiny steps right along there, but um, you know, it's it's not bad. Nothing that I need to be concerned about. So, I think the way that uh, I was going to splinter, splinter this, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it that way. Um, I was going to lay down masks. Uh, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that. Um, so, <laughs> I guess I'll see when I get there. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint the bottom of this first with the, the light blue color. And I want to do like a wavy pattern along the leading edges of the wings. I think that looks cool. It's a little bit more complicated doing it that way than, um, you know, just kind of blending the colors in like, like you normally would see. But I think it'll look really cool. So I'm going to get on with painting the bottom and get my uh, wavy pattern on and then uh, mask that off and start on the splinter camo. And I will let you know how I do that when I do it once I've figured out in my head. Okay, so I've decided how I'm going to do the camouflage. And it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt. I've, I've done it this way before. Um, so you can see I've got the bottom painted with the, uh, the blue. And then I've taped off, masked off each of the wings uh, where I want the, the wavy look to cover up the blue. And then what I did is I took my black and I went back over and I, and cause this had, this had oversprayed blue and um, it, in, in order for the rest of the, the finish to, to look, uh, the camouflage pattern to look um, consistent, I just went back in with the black and I basically just black based again. Um, instead of using white, I just used the black and, and modeled it. Um, just so we would have a consistent finish on the on the top And that's basically how I'm going to do my camouflage. So I'm probably going to come in with my lightest color Put this on here And I've got a map as you can see my map I drew out <laughs> How I want the uh, the splinter this is going to be I'm, I'm not going to follow this exactly just because my plan didn't quite work out but I've got a basic map of the colors. And I'm gonna be using three greens, if 
I can find them here that match up with, uh, I forgot what the numbers were, but I mixed them up. I'm gonna use this real kind of bright green and real light. Um, it's basically a, a diluted German gray, which is a greenish color, and then this uh, dark green. And uh, I think that'll look pretty cool. So I'm gonna get on with that. I'm gonna start with the light and then I'll mask that off and then I'll come back with the, with the black and uh, and fill in around where I mask and then hit my next color, mask that off and then finish it. So and I'll show you uh, what it looks like when it's done. <clears throat> All right, now I'm gonna take a brief time out and kind of show you what I'm doing. I've got dark green, which is uh, in a few places. <clears throat> then I've got the bright green, which is what I just painted. And I know it looks like a jumbled mess right now, but um, this is going to be the hard edge of my bright green. So what I'm going to do is come back with my black and basically re-black base this area right here, which is going to be a light green. And this is going to be all dark green. Um, so, I, so it's consistent throughout. Um, I don't know any other way to explain it, but... Um, I'll, uh, I'll flash up a picture of, of what I'm talking about once I'm done. Okay, it's the next day, and as you can see, I've got the all the masks taken taken off, and I'm really happy with how the splitter pattern turned out. I did go along the uh, the leading edge here and soften up where I had a hard edge on the wavy pattern where the blue meets the the splinter. And uh, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a red stripe along the top and the bottom on the tail here, and to do that. Um, I've masked, I've, I've masked it off. I'm, I am going to put some, some thicker t or some uh, wider tape on the top and the bottom so I don't get any overspray. But I want to do some chipping on the metal portion here. And I'm not going to chip, chip much on this plane. Uh, there's going to be a lot going on and I think uh, too much chipping is just going to uh, detract from it. So how I'm going to do the small amount of chipping along the... Uh, the metal portion there is I've got my Mr. Neo and I think you you watched some of my other videos I've used it in my other videos for this purpose so I'm just putting some on a uh, a little post-it note and I've got a triangular type shaped piece of sponge and I'm just gonna go along and just kind of dab it Dab it along the edges here. It doesn't take much. And again, I don't really want to overdo it. Just a little hint of it is what I'm going for. We'll see how that turns out. So 
It's one of those things it's easy to just kind of maybe get a little too much. but So that's that. I'm going to let that dry. Mask off, uh, mask off the, the uh, area surrounding it. And uh, just a little hint. One thing I learned from watching uh, guys that do airbrush artwork and stuff is I'll take my tape and I'll kind of fold it in half. I'll make a crease and then I'll put it on here just like so. And see how that kind of goes up. Now I won't have to mask off anymore. I can just leave it like that because that will stop the, uh, that will help prevent overspray. And I'll do the same for the bottom. And I am kind of detacking it, although this isn't uh, as paint on here with the primer that I got on. It's pretty, pretty sturdy stuff. Okay. So that should be all I need to do. Now I'm not gonna. I'm gonna get in pretty close, but. Uh, you know, if I was spraying back here, I'm still going to get overspray. But if you get in there real close, you're not going to get any overspray on it. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. It looks like I missed a little spot right here. All right. So I think this is going to be the, uh, the last uh, video until I get it finished. Because after this, all I have to do is uh, I'm going to paint on some some of the insignias I may do a swastika back here and then I've got the wing insignias and a few decals uh, and then I think I'm gonna be um, done with it of course I'm gonna do the I'll do a panel line wash and it may do a little bit of oil work but uh, I think this is gonna be the last video until the uh, completed uh, plane so thanks for watching I'll flash a few pictures up of how this part turns up and uh, it turns out and I'll see you on the next video.